When we're alive, we're radioactive. But as we go from flesh to bone to peat moss, we become less so. And why can be measured? Why could some guy at a later date know that around 2008, some guy was here who liked donuts and smoked cigarettes? Anthropology escapes me and berates me and carbon dates me. And I've found that lately, the time spent waking are just echoes of a lost dream where some guy in a lab coat cries, although he died of a broken heart, the donuts and smokes didn't help. In a mass, in a row, all together, here we go, sliding headlong down a slippery slope to, to, when the question engendered existential crises, it could be simply stated by great Danes or Laurence Olivier's who bark and hark to ghosts, dithering as they do, I dither too. I had not thought the death had undone so many. Physics doesn't dither. The line from the singularity to the present day may move through time and space in a relative way, but at no time does space-time say, um, wait, let's think about this. Clocks and watches break but time doesn't wait, and you don't need the FM band to play through your braces to know that gravity always wins. At the end of the desert, it's said, I've ran there lies a promised land. But when you're in the desert, any place not desert has enough promise. Buck Owens played guitar in a desert, and Joshua, Joshua played a horn. I can't even play drums, which they say anyone could play. And if the world becomes desert, I'm left, I guess I won't be Buck or Josh, but I will blow my horn at the Crystal Palace and watch the walls come down. Because that's the nature of walls. They fall. And I looked over one in Berlin, and it fell. And they have one in China that people steal rocks from to build houses with. And they built these giant ornamental Islam-inspired buildings that Islam-inspired fellas broke down spectacularly. If gravity is the organizing principle of the universe, and that's true, and that's the case, then why is this place so messy? I sit atop a mountaintop. And if I sit there long enough, it will wear out beneath me, and the sun will expand to envelop me, and gravity and entropy will dance as molecules expand over a wide expanse. I sit atop a mountaintop and hear them talking, but see no faces. And they will speak in a language you do not understand, in a context that is alien to me, of generations long past and long yet to be. And I don't care if your stock option is worth $300 a share. You still have to be nice, because gravity always wins. And the universe will expand and contract like the heaving chest of a sleeping puppy. And we might be its dreams. All the seals left the dock because. All the seals left the dock, and I know they're not coming back. And they don't have to because all the seals might have somewhere else to go. Maybe they have appointments and commitments. Maybe they have meetings on rocks where they have to talk and figure out where they have to be. All the seals left the dock and they're not coming back. They figured they have enough not to think what we're all about and what are we all about, not what the seals want to think about. And how much time do we have to make choices? Are all the voices we had all that mattered? If I knew, I would say something profound, but I can't. All the seals bailed on us like Jesus and the world of the rest of us. And I pray, but my words can't find a name to pray to. And I can only hope that hope has wings and carries souls on it because my soul is small and caught up in, well, caught up in everything. Well, everything. And I can find a way away from everything. But that suggests more than I'm given. I know that youth, youth equals lies and time equals times and nobody in our life will figure our life out and my life tells not enough to inform the rest of us. So why am I on the dock looking around for a seal left alone, left where they should be, where we told they, they told me to be and now they all took off and I hope they come back because the seals in San Francisco transcend metaphor and we know nothing lasts forever and I'm glad I don't, because what good would that be? The seals know me, and they're not even seals. They're sea lions. And I love you in your way. I love the sky. It looks the right shade. And I pray the seals come back for selfish reasons, for memories in a foreign language, for Minnesota tourists with cameras, for that weird barking they made that made this place our place. Sea lion, seal, and gringo alike. God tells me to scream, but fuck God, I don't have to say anything because I'm on fire. My girl may not be true, but she means well. And all the world, it's all going to hell, but that's just my perspective, and hopefully I won't see it be so. There ain't no better day than this one. There ain't no sun need to shine today. 
We don't need no curing rain. If a comet come hurtling towards San Francisco, let it be so. Today's aura block out the cosmos, evaporate the clouds into rainbows and drop so big they hit the ground with a plunk, plunk, washing away all the pee and funk of all the drunks south of market. There ain't no day better than this one when polar bears feed. They need nothing in the zoo but salmons and each other. They roll on their fronts and backs and they tuck into the zookeeper's fillets and sleep all day in the drowsy sunshine. And one polar bear say to the other, remember, remember when we used to hunt? Ha, punt, there ain't no day. Way, there ain't no better day than this one. I find your space from behind and the dogs in the park can't quite bark like you talk to the pillow in the morning sun and shine. I wake out of a pile and smile looking around me and the dog says, take me to the park where the bark. And I climb past all the spiders and find pants and watch all the sleeping thinking there ain't no better day than this one. With welcoming places, soft and dark and sunny and grassy in the park, meant for making out, where holding hands is erotic, entry is elementary, and I wonder how it works in the complicated world. When all I am, when I, when where I am is so easy to do, eat and drink and sleep and write this poem to you, drink a vernet and a beer or two, and I do know better, but not today, because today. There ain't no better way to spend a day than right here, right now, in this place with nothing to do but being with you in every imaginable way. I've seen the world up close, and it has a snarl on its face and conspires, conspires to put us in our place. But there ain't no fall so fast as a fall from grace, and it comes apace, of course. But that doesn't mean there isn't a day or a day like this one waiting to say, hell, things can be right with the universe. And that we're in grace gives, us, gives me pause because it's way up there. But hey, mountain climbers scratch and pray to say on a satellite phone, guess where I am. And astronauts unlatch their seat belts and let drops of tang float around the capsule and drink them through a straw. And they know they're coming down again. But that don't mean they can't enjoy being up there because there ain't no day like today. And that's what I have to say. And so I have a plan. Well, we can. Let's play. Cool? <laughs> uh, all right. I, I'm trying to remember the first line to poem. And I was trying to do the, this next poem first. And I still can't remember the first line to the damn poem. Here it goes. Um, I will do a different one. Oh, Tokyo, oh, Tokyo, oh, Tokyo, oh, Tokyo, that poor benighted city menaced by all things giant that stomp. What is the fare for an electric train? Do you get a refund if something with scales picks up your car and shakes it around, chewing the metal, making like you're the bean in the burrito? Oh, God, no, I can't go to Tokyo. I remember a city where I thought was, man, this place needs a visit from Godzilla with his neat ray and that neat screech and a twirl of the electric slide over a few buildings and maybe a sports arena. They had a movie with a robot Godzilla that the poorly dubbed could drive, but robots have no rhythm and can't electric slide, sigh. Godzilla could walk underwater, and then he would leap up upon shore, and all the people in Tokyo would say, oh shit, and he would pick up an electric car and shake, and the people in that car would hold on, oh Godzilla, oh Godzilla, oh Godzilla, what was that sound that you made? Something like, yeah, but not quite, and I love that sound because that sound meant Saturday mornings early before anyone else was awake, and you stomped your way into, the, into my heart. Oh, Tokyo, oh, Tokyo, oh, Tokyo, I've got to go with whatever you have, wherever it is. Kia, I'll tramp, kia, I'll stamp. 
through the plastic neighborhoods, the power in a rubber suit, protected from the power lines that run over electric trains. Oh, poor Mr. Engineer, too bad you can't steer. You're locked on rails and doomed to fail. But sometimes we're in that car. And sometimes we're in the rubber suit. And neither place could be construed as comfortable. In the week this was written, a bridge fell into a river for no other reason but the weight of the cars it was built to serve. And I know that Godzilla is just a metaphor for calamity, either of the seismic variety or like that bomb they dropped on Nagasaki. And somewhere under my feet, there's an electric train running that in 15 minutes will emerge in West Oakland and the people on that train will look out the windows and what will they see? Maybe some bridges, maybe some cranes, and maybe some fog, and maybe, just maybe, In the valleys of the sun, there are no long shadows in the afternoon because, well, you're on the sun. How do you tell time on the sun? Can you? When you look up, can you see the stars? Or is it too bright, just too bright? It's a given that you can't look down because you shouldn't stare at the sun. If you find yourself in a valley of the sun, for most of the horizon, it's difficult to look up. And it's hot. Yes, it's that. But if you can't handle the hot, you shouldn't be on the sun. But under bright lights is now where the world is at. In the light, in the bright, all of the time. We live on the sun and our shoes are melting and our eyes are squinting. I have allergies and had a giant booger mostly in my nose. I looked around and ducked down an alley and plucked it out, looking up to see a security camera looking down at me. Is there some tag or something that is now broadcasting this? Is there a secret picker video? Will people comment on my picking style, on my choice of fingernail, little finger left hand? Am I now an instant international nose picker? Has my booger gone viral? Will or do people on the street give me that faint, wait, do I know that guy, look? People don't live on mountains, probably even on the sun. Goats live on mountains but really only mountain goats. But people, us people, we live in valleys or on plains or coasts. I met a Dutch girl tonight that works under the Matterhorn. She didn't live on the Matterhorn. She lived in the valley beneath. She has peaks, she has valleys. Some choose peaks, some choose valleys. On the sun, there must be valleys and maybe societies. Math has invented dimensions we don't understand. And the problem with math, when it does that, is that eventually we find a million little things that make the universe even more incomprehensible. So trust me when I say there are valleys on the sun, but believe me when I say what context they exist in, I don't understand. But still, me, still believe me when I say we live on the sun and we have peaks because we always have to climb and we have valleys that in truth probably resemble more the valleys of the sun than that idyllic Swiss valley under the Matterhorn. And now when we traverse that valley, anyone could see because it's all so bright. And I try to process your fear and I try to empathize with your heartbreak, but I can't understand. I was born on Pluto, which is not even the planet it was before. And getting from there to here has worn out a lot of shoes but the journey has given me time to acclimate, but imperfectly. So the heat, I can handle. The light, I'm still working on that. All these things that become are made in the sun. And much smarter people than I can tell you what physics will do when it has the chance to. But there's a who here that will tell you, dear, there is, no, there is so much that we don't know that makes these pursuits worthwhile. Even though we still know, tomorrow we'll be wrong. There's still a value in that. And even more, a joy. Because tomorrow's truths are not a gift given us. All we have is today. Yay!